episode ready to go They're gonna talk about the good and the trash and anything in between Cherishing make believe, get ready for Halloween, it's the horror show I know you miss those guys, tune in and find out what's on their list tonight They butcher and dissect, take apart and mutilate Listen to your two favorite brainiacs communicate It's the horror show Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Horror Show, the show that dissects, mutilates, dismembers, and butchers all of your favorite and not-so-favorite horror movies and other horror-related events. I'm Sean. I'm Joe. Hello, Joe. Hello. We just had a break after our Patreon, and I'm waiting for right now to crack a can open in the microphone. So. <laughs> that's that's the way we do it here. I uh, would expect nothing less. <laughs> We're coming off of our live show break. Um... That was a fun live show. That was one of the best. Probably my favorite ever uh, for me. I don't know what it was. Our flow was like on fire and we had major fucking technical issues and somehow it did not derail it. Like it's fucking meant it was mental. And honestly, thanks to the fans for that. Cause yeah. uh, kudos to you. Uh, you, you, you pulled it together and uh you know, I know, I know you take it very seriously, not take it very seriously, but like you take pride in, in, in the output. So right. I know you were nervous about getting together and uh, all was good. And shout out to the fans because absolutely on fire with the participation in the comments. Yeah, no, very, it was, very fun time. It was super fucking funny. Um, we, we, <laughs> we, our contest at the end was, and I don't know why that, oh, somebody had a British accent in that movie. Oh, Michael, Michael Caine, Kane. of course. <laughs> the only British guy <laughs> in Amityville or wherever the fuck they were. Uh, yeah, so we like got on this Michael Caine thing, and then we were like, hey, the contest tonight is British accents. <laughs> Who can do a British accent? Um, I think one person did. One person, because then we changed it to jokes. You could tell a joke. It was a yeah, joke yeah. contest. <laughs> and somebody did uh, perform their joke in a... British accent. British accent. It was very good. Yeah, yeah. And also, uh, shout out to Ella and Dave, two listeners from the UK who stayed up so it was like five in the morning yeah. to join us and then had to listen to us uh, make fun of their, their language. So uh, thanks <laughs> thanks for being good sports. Uh, yeah, thank you. Ella, Ella actually sent us a really nice letter. Um, uh, I got to share it with you. Um, just kind of a personal thing, but she, she did say she wanted to come on and do her British accent for the contest so bad, but, but, but was a little shy. So uh, next time she said she's going to do it for us. Oh, wait, and she I has think, an accent. I think she said she has a, she has an actual Cockney accent or she, well, li- she lives in a Cockney area or something. I, I don't know, but she was like, so your, your Cockney accent was really funny, which means it's not a compliment. <laughs> It's not a compliment, but thank you, Al, for for those kind words. Um, Then we got, um, I think we were supposed to announce it on the live show, and we didn't, because that's what we do, but (laughs) we've got some big news. We definitely knew before the live show, right? Man, I don't, time doesn't exist. (laughs) We know now, so that's- Ever Ever since this LHC fucking fired up. Everything's fucked, dude. Everything's fucked. Nothing makes sense. Time's not real. Like, I don't have any time anymore. Yeah, um, that's true. But I don't know. But anyway. All, uh, all facts. All facts. All true. Uh, what was I talking about? I was talking about... The, the announcement we have. Oh, the announcement is we have a live show. A live, live show. In a person. live, live show in September. Uh, our live show will be in person. Um and in Chicago. That, in Chicago at Brood, a horror themed what do you coffee call it? Shop. Coffee shop. Coffee shop. Horror themed coffee shop. Uh they don't really do things after hours, but they're letting us wing it. They're letting us in. We're gonna fire on all cylinders and we're gonna show a movie. It's gonna be the same format as the live shows we've been doing, just in person this time. So if you're apprehensive about coming to watch us talk to each other for three hours we're still gonna do that but uh you can there'll be a movie in between yes uh, come on out bring some friends uh and we'll get so drunk that we derail the entire thing with dad jokes and british accents talk over the moon <laughs> except maybe because we're in chicago we'll just insult everyone by doing chicago accents. chicago accents i like, <laughs> you just I like got it. so excited 
<laughs> now we're talking. <laughs> and shout out to uh, DJ Intel, who has been supporting us since day one, and you know he has involved with the brood, and he's hooking it up. Who He hooked us up uh, the last time we were in Chicago with our yep. live show, so glad to be coming around again. He's a good dude. I love him. And then we're going uh, to Riot Fest the next day. And then we're going to Riot Fest. This is going to be a fucking See fucking gore. I love it. See gore, baby. What, Gore's that day? I thought it was the Misfits. Well, Misfits too, right? Yeah. Hey, Joe. uh, Gore hasn't headlined a fucking (laughs) (laughs) festival maybe ever, but definitely not since 94. (laughs) Well, Gore's headlining? Dude, imagine seeing Gore. Say less. (laughs) See him him eight times. Yeah. Oh man, uh, yeah, no, they're not headlining. Surprisingly, the Misfits are the Misfits. Well, it's all right. All right, I guess I'm excited to see the Misfits, though. Yeah, for sure. I really want to see them again. Um, so come out, uh, bring friends. I think it will. I think it'll be fun. We're gonna show a movie. We haven't decided the movie yet, but we'll try and get something good. It's not gonna be good. Be yeah. Good. <laughs> and if you want to, if you want to see us in your town, talk to somebody else. Talk to Reagan. <laughs> <laughs> talk to Reagan and talk to the people in your town. Like talk to the fucking cons and stuff. Um, yeah, that's what we need. That's what we, we, need. we don't like. I I reach out to him or whatever, but like I don't have a list of all of them. I don't know all the cool ones. Like. Reagan was like, oh, yeah, there's like a horror film festival in Houston every year. And I was like, I didn't even fucking know that that was a thing. Like, you know, and we do yeah. a little bit. of We did a little bit of outreach. I haven't done that in a while. But like w- when we were doing live shows, like I was doing that. Never heard of that once. So, yeah, like reach out to those people. Let them know and uh, let Reagan know. And she'll like pass that info along to me. In this format that we're doing of showing the movie and taking breaks to talk about so it, I'm loving. I we're getting good feedback on it, so that would be ideal, you know, going forward. So if you have right. connections or you want us to do something in your town, you know, reach out, uh, help help set us up with someone. Yeah, exactly. Um, all right. Speaking of that, let's let's get back to the horror show format, baby. We got John Carpenter's Vampires. We sure do. Nineteen ninety eight. Uh, this was no Los Muertos. No, you're really fond of that <laughs> John Bovey guy. Um, what twenty million dollar budget? Yeah, it was supposed to have a sixty million dollar budget. It was a sixty million dollar budget, <laughs> which is nuts. And Russell Mulcahy <laughs> <laughs> was the uh, original director. Yeah. And he was From bringing Australia. he was bringing the heaters with fucking uh, Dolph Lundgren. Dolph Lundgren as Jack Crow, our our lead character, um, and Russell Russell Mukaki. <laughs> I know I'm not saying his name right. I'm not, I am not <laughs> the book. What um, kind of porn does a cow watch? Mukaki. Mukaki. That's good. That's good. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> but uh, Russell Russell. <laughs> I know. Uh, fuck. Muscle Mukaki. Uh, he did Razorback, which is a plus creature feature. Yes, it is it film. Is. Uh, I recommend everyone watching that. And then uh, Highlander, which just to recap Highlander really quick, it's an Australian director directing a Frenchman who's playing a <laughs> Scottish guy whose friend is a Scottish guy in real life playing an Egyptian with the most Hispanic name of all time. And I think we should do the Highlander movies. As I know they're not horror, but just listen to Just fucking listen to that. <laughs> I, I think I think you're 100% right. Um, but I think our show now, I think we've quantified what our show is, which is our show is like, is like uh, just – what Monster Vision was. Because people think, like, Joe Bob's Monster Vision shit was, like, always a good horror movie. It wasn't. Right. He did yeah. fucking, like, random action movies. <laughs> Dude, Hi- sure, he did, Highlander was on it. Yeah. He did Highlander. Yes. He yeah. has done Highlander. So, um, you know, I think Let's that's more it. our wheelhouse. Our wheelhouse is, like, the late night syndication. That's our fucking... That's our jam. And so I think Highlander fits into that perfectly. Yeah, I mean, we did Rad for fuck's sake. Let's do Highlander. <laughs> Rad. We did rad and uh, whatever the other one is. Rat. M- what was the other? Turbo. Whatever. I don't no. know. <laughs> Which one's the bike one? 
Send me an angel. Oh, me and DJ got beef with that. So anyway, um, wait, what? Me and DJ Intel have beef. He loves Rad. Yeah, Rad rules. I think I I think I poo pooed Rad. Oh, okay. I don't remember my takes on any movie. I know I don't even to say that. I was gonna say they ruled now. But anyway, Russell Bukaki and Dolph oh, Lundgren yeah. were attached for sixty million dollars, and then uh, the studio told them to get lost and he said oi crikey and then he took Dolph with him which is insane that that that's the fact i wanted to bring up was like hey Dolph only works for me buddy <laughs> i took- mean they immediately dude that, that's not even an exaggeration they immediately started working on silent trigger yeah together yeah like he just took them and just started making their own movie <laughs> with with elements of the script for vampires which seems the, the, illegal by the way <laughs> seems totally illegal especially since uh, vampires is based on a book right <laughs> So it's like, what was, how can he do that? And, and I don't, I didn't read the book, but I did read like a blurbs of it before doing this episode. John Carpenter did not like to say it's based on the book is ridiculous. <laughs> the, the guy, the guy's name is the same, but it does not seem to be one no. of the same. I mean, John- also the, <laughs> the book has the end of uh, the word vampires as a money, a dollar signs, which is super is. cool. Super sick. <laughs> But John Carpenter wrote this, um, ended up writing it because there was no budget. So they originally they originally were going to have writers, but then we're like, nah. and then John Carpenter, I guess, was like, hey, and John, you, you were about to retire from making movies because you were pissed off. How about you stop taking on fucking jobs for free? Like, like, oh, we ran out of money, so I just wrote it for him. What? What? Know your worth, John. The price tomorrow isn't the same, or what, what is it? The price today is tomorrow's no, price isn't today's yeah. price, or yesterday's price, whatever. Fat Joe, Fat Joe. Um, yeah, it, it. So they the budget gets cut after he leaves to twenty million, and then they hire arguably a much more talented and uh, capable filmmaker and give him a smaller budget. <laughs> And they gave him two two screenplays, two screenplays, and yeah. he was just like, mm, "I'm going to make this Sam Peckinpah worship and just make it pretty much a western yeah. with vampires." Yeah. And, and how did he do on that front? Listen, <laughs> I, listen man, I I fucking like this movie. I th- I thought this was really fun. I'm John Carpenter is my favorite of all time. I think I've seen this maybe once. You know, this. Memoirs of an Invisible Man and Ghost of Mars. I haven't watched pretty much since they came out, so I knew nothing about this. I ended up remembering more scenes than I thought I would as I was watching them. I fucking liked it, man. I thought it was really good. I I, I want to say too. I feel like I feel like uh, Mukaki. <laughs> I feel like he. I feel like something. Some part of his like Highlander scheme rubbed off on this because Daniel Baldwin is in this movie playing playing a man named Tony Montoya. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fucking unbelievable. That has to be Mukaki's influence. Right? Like Hey, you know who should play this clearly Spanish person? Um a Baldwin. And they actually asked Alec to they do asked it. Alex. He recommended Danny. Yeah. Same year this is the same year that Danny was caught in New York City Plaza Hotel butt naked on a coke binge and i think i think knowing that uh he did pretty good in this movie like he, he pulled it together wait this is before the binge or after well well when he got caught he's like he's, he's, he, when he got caught he was just like i've been doing this since like 1980 <laughs> so so you, you can tell he's oh, of course joe he's sweating in every scene dude, dude, every scene every scene <laughs> Disgusting oh, coke binge sweat. Oh, but sweat. listen, I thought he did good. I, th- I honestly thought he did good. I liked his character. Dude, Bruce Campbell was originally suggested to be that character. And while I love oh. Bruce Campbell, give me like slightly chubbier Alec Baldwin. <laughs> he's good. And dude, well, because he's clearly playing himself. Dude, most of the movie is spent that, with that, that woman where he's like, the fucking who and like, dude, and then he marries her, <laughs> loves her. That, that I I was going to say the same thing. I, I, his his I don't think he's acting that much because no. he's 
dude, she's a fucking vampire, and he knows she's a vampire. And at one point, you know, she does what vampires do and bites him. He's like, "What are you fucking nuts?" Like that's that's an actual quote after being bit by a vampire, which I think is something he would say if he was bitten by somebody. And he's, as John said, he marries her at the end, but like. Any scene they're in together, he's like, "You fucking piece of shit, get away from me!" Like, full on line. But then, but then, there's multiple times where this girl, Laura Palmer from Twin Peaks, yeah, uh, is, is like tied up in bondage. There's one that she's butt naked, like her arms behind her, and he's and he is being so reassuring and like calming. Every anytime she is in the worst situation, like predicament, it just no escape, <laughs> fucking bound. He's like, "It's all right, sweets, we'll get out of this." <laughs> <laughs> but then anytime she's she's like not bound up, he's just a piece of shit to her. He's, he honestly calls her the craziest shit in this movie. Like him and James Wood are like on one in this movie. Like, dude, they're just screaming profanities, dude. Pre Twitter James Wood. Uh, he like he, I know I know he has made a lot of enemies and and a lot of people don't like what he says and how outspoken he is. But he plays, he's a hero in this movie, but he's still such a scumbag. Dude, and he plays that role, he plays that role so well. And what I really love about his role in this is that we know that Dolph Lundgren was supposed to play that character. And this movie is written like it should have an Arnold Schwarzenegger or a Sylvester Stallone. And instead it's just a, James Woods is 51 years old. And finally, we have, a, we have an action character that, I mean, there's no point in time where you think this guy is not anything but 51 years old. He's just like my dad. If you were just like, hey, dad, go clear out this, this barn full of vampires. That is what James Woods is. That is how he acts. He's just a fucking grump. And I loved it. I fucking absolutely loved it. He's perfect in slimy ass roles like this. <laughs> That's the fucking funniest shit I've ever heard. What do you think if I, I was going to ask this, like somebody asked me about this cause I was telling them I was going to watch this and they didn't really, they couldn't remember who James Woods was. Don't worry about it. They're fucking, sometimes I hang out with fucking idiots. It's fine. <laughs> um, and I was like, all I could come up with was he or casino and, um, Hercules, the cartoon. What would you, that's right. That's right. What would you say he's like most famous for in your opinion? Ooh, isn't that James fucking Woods weird, most? dude? I mean, I mean, the first movie that comes to my mind is Videodrome because he's he's absolutely great. Okay, Videodrome, right? Yes. Um, you know, Hercules. I don't know how many people know that James Wood, like, like how people that are watching Hercules, yeah, you know, are usually kids. So I don't <laughs> yes. think they would know who James Woods is in that. Um, you know, probably Casino. Probably. It's crazy though, right? Because like I feel like he's in a million things. He is. He, I mean, he, but like, he's also the priest that gets flies all over his face while he's taking a shit in a uh, scary movie too. <laughs> when he's moving the Amityville horror. He has such a weird career. He has such a weird career with real no standout. I mean, besides Videodrome, right? Stand out lead roles. Um, it's crazy. Yeah. I'm sure Paul's losing his mind, but right now, Paul, Paul's punching the air. <laughs> Don't you remember John Q? <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so 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 weird he's a weird guy he's got a weird history but and like joe said it's so bizarre to see him in this movie and it's even weirder because john carpenter was like yeah i didn't want a muscly guy i wanted a guy like uh james woods because that's a guy that looks like he'll fucking eat you alive it's like john what the fuck are you saying like <laughs> But but like I was saying, he he is like the working class badass, right? Because yeah. Ar- Arnold's perfect because Arnold is just roided out and like he just looks like he'll snap somebody in two. Yeah. But if you just want a more realistic person who's just gonna fuck shit up, I I like his build, I like his demeanor, and I just love that he's just a middle aged man. He's fucking fifty one years old. There were some other pe- <laughs> and acts like it. There were some other people that were considered for this role. One of them is one of the most insane things you'll ever hear. Clint Eastwood, yep. uh, Kurt Russell, these would all be cool. Bill Paxton, he would have done fine. Wait, I remember reading it. I, I know who you're going to say. I know who you're going to say. Al Pacino, <laughs> Joe Pesci. <laughs> and that's, not the, that's not the wild oh, one. Joe, Push, Joe Pesci walking around being like, hey, hey what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to kill some fucking vampires. Like, what the fuck are you talking about that's the most insane thing i've ever heard and then i mean this one is also insane arlie ermy that 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 one is way more <laughs> arlie ermy 
Dude, Arlie Army was hey, what the hell? 60 years old in Full Metal Jacket, which was almost 20 years before that. <laughs> That's the funniest thing. Uh, yeah, he called um, James Wood. He wanted the Vampire Slayer to be a savage as the prey he's after. A guy who's just as menacing as the vampires. James Woods is the kind of guy you'd believe could and would chew off the leg of a vampire. Now, I don't know if I agree with that assessment of James Woods. But James Woods is most definitely the kind of guy I would believe to empty rounds and rounds of ammunition into vampires knowing knowing that it's ineffective he, he is a professional vampire hunter and he knows what works and what kills him and he has an arsenal of all times that does nothing it, from from the beginning he is just unloading clip after clip and it does nothing to these vampires and he does it until the very end <laughs> they have the worst arsenal of weapons they are the most poorly equipped team of uh, of paramilitary type people that have ever existed in this world. The the way they kill vampires is so much work and so fucking elaborate. <laughs> it's so much fucking work. They, they, they essentially tie a, tie a lasso around like a vampire body, which is hooked up to a car, which then pulls them outside into the daylight where they explode. But like through a house, like they'll be through a house. They'll yeah. be deep in a house, like in a room. They'll shoot them with a bow and arrow and then tie a string to it. And then (laughs) fucking uh, Alec Baldwin, Daniel Baldwin, will fucking pull them out with the Jeep that he he drives. (laughs) That's the most insane thing I've ever heard. Listen, Uh, everything about this movie rules. I'm just thinking about the ending of Danny, which we'll get to. And I'm not going to talk about it now, but it's so stupid. So stupid that he, he does that. And that <laughs> that James Woods agrees to it. Uh, what I also like is that the movie just kicks off. Like, like, thank you, John. We know what vampires are. Every every vampire movie takes the first forty five minutes. Oh, to set I up. know. What is a vampire? How do you kill a vampire? This just sets up with them being like, I think they're in this house. Uh, let's go murder them. And then <laughs> they, that is what they do. The opening scene is fucking crazy. Like, it's fucking awesome. Like, it's absolutely nuts. Uh, that it's great. And actually, so is the like, it's so crazy because the movie kind of pops off like 30 minutes in and then you're like, oh, shit, it's almost like a second beginning. There's like two beginnings, right? There's like yeah, the first 15, 20 minutes that kind of give you the background and then like the movie starts. It's pretty cool. Um, Very uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer esque, which mm-hmm. Buffy the TV show was released or not released it premiered the year before so 1997s when they were shooting the film like i I think they must have been very influenced because the main vampire who's played by uh, what's what's his name he plays terry silver in the karate kid three and he's he's back in corporate kai um oh blanking on his fucking name oh it's uh uh, thomas ian griffin thomas ian thomas ian griffin um he looks like a vampire straight out of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Yes, he does. What did you think about him as as the lead vampire? <sighs> he looked like fucking Marilyn Manson. He's caked and shit. He's just I caked was furious. Like- I was furious about that. Um, but otherwise, I actually kind of liked him. Um, I thought it was I a too. good character. Yeah. And I thought they like... They like... Uh, they explained his powers well and like... It was nothing, and his motivation. And his motivation. There was nothing outlandish about him. Like everything was like pretty good about that, actually. And like and he's pretty vicious. Very Some of vicious. his kills are yeah. good. They had the cut. There's an there's an NC seventeen cut out there. That's nuts. I mean, I would love to see it. I mean, it's only twenty seconds though, is what I read. So twenty seconds. Yeah. <laughs> that's God, and dude, which they probably could have left. About it. How stupid that is. They, dude, they probably could have left it in if they just had James Woods say a hundred less fucking curse words. Or or Daniel Baldwin st- stops saying horror every time that girl walks. James into Woods scene. calls a vampire a pole smoker at some point in this movie. <laughs> like he's tied up, and that is his go-to comment to a vampire. Dude, there's one scene where he's just he's talking about. I think it's a vampire, a woman vampire, but he's just like, "You fucking stupid idiot, bitch! Get the fuck out of here!" And then you're like, "Oh my god, what what? Like that doesn't even seem like a script." And then he like walks out of the room and is like, "Yeah, fucking dumb whore, get out, get lost, go in the sun." And you're like, 
This is not even in the fucking script. It didn't Car- just- Car- <laughs> Carpenter did say, he was like, I had a rule with James. Because James was, I guess, was notoriously hard to work with. And John was like, I found him to be great. But... He's like, I, my rule, my rule was we would film everything the way it's supposed to be written. And then we would do the same scene and you can just improvise whatever you want. <laughs> and I think, a, I, I think a lot of this was James Woods just being James Woods. Dude, you could hear it in his voice that he was, he had no idea the words he was saying. You don't, you didn't know what was coming next. He was like, you fucking idiot, whore, vampire. You're like, what? <laughs> that's so fucking aggressive. Um, so like we said, you got Daniel Baldwin, you got James Woods, you got Cheryl Lee from, um, Twin Peaks fame. You got our favorite, uh, Mark Boone Jr. Beardless. Bobby. Beardless, baby. Um, I love that guy. I love that guy. He's the best. Um, was there anything else I want to say? Oh, uh, did you see that they, the, one of the original scripts had the Pope being the head vampire? Yes. Yes, I did. That's fucking amazing. I think, I think the book had that oh maybe really oh well that would make sense yeah because if it's like about whatever uh anyway uh this was uh john carpenter's most profitable movie of the 90s yeah and he walked out halfway through filming he did our boy greg nicotero nicotero uh who we talked about when we did the romero movies uh he took over for a few days and then Thing. He was asked back. John came back. Listen, man, you're sitting in fucking New Mexico of all the places to fucking film. You know, like, come on. Give the guy a break. It's fucking hot out there. Can't send an old guy out there. $42 million on home video rental and purchase sales. Fucking nuts. It's $42 absolutely million. fucking nuts. John Carpenter is also, I think, a little bit defensive of this movie. Because, like, all of his quotes about it are like, listen... Yeah, we only made twenty million dollars in the U.S., but we made a fucking shitload of cash in Japan. But like, there's no like record of that. He, he, he does. <laughs> he does highlight uh, Japan quite often when asked about this. He, he, I feel like he's just a little bit defensive of this one. Uh, Gene Siskel uh, loved it, dude. Gave it four out of four stars, <laughs> which is insane. And then said that James Woods was his pick for best Oscar for this best actor in the Oscars for this film. Gene, Gene Siskel knows what he's talking about. No, he fucking did. Who? who 1998. Was he on his best deathbed? Actor. Was he fucking? Get- <laughs> he's still alive, isn't he? Is Gene Siskel not alive? No, they're fucking dead. They're both. They're both dead. Siskel went first, I think. Get the fuck out. 1999. Huh? Oh, so yeah, he was on his deathbed. Oh my god, dude, 98. <laughs> Yo, he was just like, oh, well, oh, it was the greatest movie I've ever seen. <laughs> no offense to the dead. Rest in peace, Gene. <laughs> oh, fucking horrible. Uh, you fucking... know, you know, you know, he <laughs> he had brain surgery in May 1998, and that's what did him in. So, so this is the greatest right, performance but... I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Fucking blood coming and dripping down his head like Rudy Julia. <laughs> that was a good run, horror show. <laughs> I don't think anyone's uh, out there, you know. Big, a big Gene Siskel fan. <laughs> by, by the way, for sure there Luke, are. And we're gonna loosed, get, a lot of, loosed a lot of the world's biggest Gene Siskel fans. We're going to get, like, at least three messages being like, you guys fucking How lost me. How dare you fuck. I mean, Joe, you got somebody fucking so mad about E.T. porn, so fucking... <laughs> <laughs> Making fun of a guy that died after having like massive brain surgery is significantly worse than that. Um, oh, but you know, you know who did win an award for this? Who? Daniel Baldwin won <laughs> worst supporting actor in the 1998 Stinkers. Come the 98 on. Stinkers. Oh, the Stinkers are back. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. We haven't talked about the stinkers since Yo, in the, a few months. The stinkers is like honestly an LHC thing. It's a fucking large head on collider. Thing. <laughs> this never existed. It was only the fucking Razzies, dude. We've been doing the show for fucking how many years now? Never saw the stinkers. Now the stinkers are on every page we do. Like, hey, remember that classic stinkers moment? <laughs> dude, the stinkers isn't a thing because they always they just list every movie that came out that year. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Let's see. Where's where's supporting actor for 1999? Uh, Wait, it was supporting actor. Y- yes. 
Because it says Jar Jar Binks won. <laughs> Well, oh, no, you're oh, at 99, 98. 98. Oh. So he, it was against Sean Connery and the Avengers, Benic- Benicio del Toro and Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. That, that I mean, that's insane. That that doesn't seem right. No, Dennis Hopper and Meet the Deedles. <laughs> fair, fair. Are you telling me Daniel Baldwin was worse? That's what they're telling you. And John Malkovich in the Man in the Iron Mask. I don't. By the way, Dennis Hopper was the most voted after Daniel Baldwin. I mean, Benicio. Benicio. I mean, look look at their dishonorable mentions. It's it's a list of seventy five movies. <laughs> oh shit! Uh, I think we've also done this one before. Um, I think we've looked at this before because I see. Uh, I still know what you did last summer in here, so we probably did look at this. Um, all right. Well, cool. 98 stinkers winner. Congratulations. Um, Danny B. And then according to John Carpenter, uh, Gary Kibb was shortlisted for best cinematography at uh, the Academy Awards. <clears throat> Again, that seems like something that would be documented, wouldn't it? <laughs> it does. But, yeah. <laughs> fucking John had lost his fucking mind. Um, well, we open up this movie with the crew. They're staking out a barn like Joe and I had talked about. They've got a giant military truck. They've got uh, a Jeep. Yeah. The Jeep is only for Daniel Baldwin. <laughs> yep. He gets his own vehicle. He's the right-hand man of uh, Crow, who is uh, James Woods. Um, and the vampires also keep a priest on the payroll, which I thought was uh, an th- interesting take. <laughs> Like every Slayer, the yeah, Slayers, the Slayers, like, yeah, and it, all Slayers teams have to have like a priest <laughs> on their payroll in order to hunt properly. They're Vatican sponsored. The yes. Yes. <laughs> Which is insane. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, so they have a priest uh, with them and then they pull out these insane weapons that you're like, oh, these are going to be vampire killing weapons. One of them appears to be like a giant, like light. Like a, a big light. So I was like really excited to see some like vampire killing weapons. Um, and as we mentioned, oh, 99% of their equipment does not kill vampires whatsoever. It, it, it arguably doesn't even slow the vampire. No, most times it does not. Most times it does not. Is the only way to kill a vampire in this movie, I don't think it is, the sunlight. No, they use stakes. They do, right. but like sometimes, stakes. but sometimes even when you use the stake, it doesn't work. Because because for some inexplicable, they're all metal. No, <laughs> they're all metal, and for some inexplicable reason, Jack Crow is like staking them through the face, which doesn't do anything to them except annoy them, and they just immediately get up. When we know that these are traditional like vampires, they're gonna die if you put a stake through their heart. And you know what's funny is like. I was going to mention this earlier when we were talking about the guy that played Valak being a good actor. Um, I think he's good. What I really like about that character is um, he's doing the villain thing, like the slow, like I'm coming after you crow. Like he could easily dispatch all of them, but he's like got a vendetta against crow, but it fucking works. It's not, it's not like just kill him. You're like, I get why he's waiting for this guy. And they give a reason why he's waiting. And and at the end, it comes into play. Right. It's like, cause he's like, why don't you just kill me? And then he's like, this is why it explains it. Even crow's like, well, fuck. Yeah. So it's, it's it's fucking great. (laughs) It's fucking great when you work that in. So the whole movie, you're not like, why wouldn't he just obliterate fucking everyone? Um, But that you, you get a reason and it, it works out. I think it really helps that character. I don't think we said this, but Willem Dafoe was originally going to be Valak. I could see that. I could fucking. I think, you, I think he would be. I think he would have been really good. He would have been fucking amazing. Just yeah. like <laughs> being the Green smart. Goblin. <laughs> How has his face got more and more demented as he's aged? <laughs> rubber, made out of rubber. <laughs> it, like every movie he's in, his face distorts like so much Alive. more. <laughs> A live action Gumby. <laughs> he really is. It's fucking insane. Um I love that guy so much. I, I'm I'm loving him more and more with age too. Sure. Um anyway, uh John Carpenter did the score for this. Uh what did you think? 
He did, and you know what? I am very fond of it because it's not a tip. Sean, Sean, it's yeah. You're making for those that aren't watching. He's making a face at me. <laughs> It's not a typical Carpenter, no. you know, goblin two-note synthesizer <laughs> score. It, it fits the theme of a Western. I liked it. Oh, dude, the, the first song is on loop so long, and it's just like... Meow, meow. <laughs> 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 Fucking most generic-ass shit. Um, it works. It's fine. Lay off my man. Lay off my man. He was just tired. He's he was gonna just retire. He yeah, was tired old man. Dude, he's gonna retire, and he has to make a score in a Western <laughs> vampire movie. And for again, no money, probably. Um, yeah. Anyway, vampires start falling out all over the place, and again, they unload millions of fucking bullets into these vampires, knowing that it's not going to do anything. Now, this is our first encounter we're watching, so we're like. Give it a pass. Maybe they'll learn their lesson. The rest of the movie, this is all they do. They don't. At one point, James Woods fights the lead vampire, arguably the most powerful, right? Like, clearly the most powerful. He is the most powerful. He's the first vampire ever created. Um, uh, James Woods starts hitting him with two by fours that he finds on the ground. That's his big fucking plan. He's like, like just smashing wood on his head. (laughs) What the fuck? What the fuck are we doing? This is, makes no fucking sense. Um, yeah, it's so fucking weird. And then, uh, but they they dispatch those um, vampires pretty easily with an arrow that's attached to a rope that's attached to a jeep that Daniel Baldwin operates, pulls them out of the house, and burns them alive in the sun. That's like what they do. They did it the first time. I was like, okay, that's kind of cool. Like that's yep. cool. And then they did it to. Eight other vampires. <laughs> we watch a montage of it. It's fucking madness. Uh, and that's when Daniel Baldwin turns to the priest and says, nothing like a little head, huh, Padre? Great line. Great line. Saying that to a priest while holding a dead person's skull. Doing his Al Snow impression. <laughs> nothing like a little... Dude, the, uh, and, like, we get it. You're in the Southwest... You don't need to say Padre every fucking... None of you are Spanish. Well, like, his character... Dude, his character's name... Uh, I know! Indicates that he is. Oh, trust me. I know. When he says Vaya con Dios at the end in, like, the whitest fucking way possible. Oh, uh, dude. <laughs> Vaya con that, Dios. <laughs> that made me double take. Because I, I was like, maybe maybe they just wrote his name not knowing, like, it had a Hispanic undertone. But then when he said that, I was like... Wait, is he really supposed to be playing a Hispanic person? Because that's Vaya, nuts. Vaya con Dios. <laughs> You're right. You can't say it wider than he said it. <laughs> it's so insane. Um, and the priest, you know, he's there to bless the vampires, let them go, go to heaven, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, and then... This movie is one of my the one of the, like the most annoying parts of this movie is uh, we're going to talk about it about another scene. Well, it's with like the weapons, right? They never like learn their lesson, and it happens here too, where James Woods is like the boss wasn't there, like the head one wasn't there, and Daniel Baldwin's like, you don't suppose there's another nest out there? Which, which like, of course there is. He's not there. Which, also, they've been doing this for years. <laughs> yeah, they they are an established team. Y- yeah, and and James Woods goes, sure as hell, better not be. That's insane. That's the most insane thing I've ever heard. What? <laughs> the most w- wishful wishful thinking of all. Yeah, complete wishful thinking. Like, you'd have to be so deranged to believe that. Like, if I were Daniel Baldwin, I'd be like, oh, we're in fucking trouble. Like, this is not, <laughs> this is, our leader's fucking broken. <laughs> like, he's, this is insane. Yeah, better not come back here. Like, I mean, guy's 600 years old. Uh, I think. <laughs> I think he's going to stick around. Um, also, in this world, vampires are very real, but no one knows about them. Which they talk about in the very next scene. They immediately go to a hotel room with a bunch of prostitutes. And I actually really like this line because he's like, hey, uh, vampires are real and we can prove it. And also, God is real. Uh, we can prove it. But I don't really understand why all this exists and why all this is happening and what he's doing to help us. Yeah. <laughs> I like that line. Yeah, it was great. It was great. And uh, I love that this is supposed to be a secret. And literally everyone there has a prostitute on their lap and they're like, ever hear of vampires? <laughs> <laughs> 
I have evidence. Uh, and then evidence uh, comes marching through the fucking door. Goes down on uh, Laura Palmer. It goes down on Laura Palmer. I forgot about that it's part. Vampire cunnilingus. Right? Yeah, Look and back. you watch her fucking squeal in delight. She's liking it. She loves she it. A bit on the leg. But then he goes over to the house, the party, that the prostitute party, uh, where our boy, what's his name, Boone, opens the door yeah. and gets fucking obliterated by Valak, dude. By his big, big pointy fingers. Dude, too. this his favorite move, and then I did, I actually love this thing so much. Yeah. He just loves pushing his fucking hand through people, and I fucking love it because, quite honestly. If you had the power to do that, wouldn't that be the easiest thing to do? It'd be the easiest. Just having go to bite right someone on the neck, <laughs> yeah, just dude, slicing them. Just, bro, that's all he does. I was like, that's fucking amazing. And this is this is ninety eight, so the gore could have been really cheesy, and it's, it worked. It, it looked fine. It looked fine. I don't know how that they pulled that off though. When the guy slides in half, he cuts a guy in half with his fingernails. Uh and he does the like classic slide. Yeah, but uh, it's not like the ghost ship. How? But how did they avoid doing that? I don't know. It looked like too good. Like I was like, oh shit, I, for the time. I, I agree. I agree. It, it was really fucking weird. Um, Valak was, obliterates. Well, as, soon as, as soon as he sliced him, I was like expecting to groan. Yeah. All right, here we go. Here we fucking go. And then it was, it was good. Yeah, it was really good. Um, and Valak kills everyone at the party. Everyone. Vampires, hunters prostitutes no one is safe except james woods who he calls by name who he calls by name and also james woods dives and tries again using bullets <laughs> that stunt actor is a fucking hero that guy took such a bump it was unbelievable Dude, well because for some reason they were like we're gonna have james woods dive and shoot the vampire and he's like great this room's huge uh and there's stuff for him to land behind and hide behind and they're like yeah no we want you to dive into that wall but also on top of that table <laughs> directly onto to that table <laughs> and like an, not even like a dining room table that you would land on like a fucking accent table that just fucking just hurt. smash yeah just <laughs> break your back that, that's such a good point. A wide open room where all he has to do is like roll, right? He just has to right, roll behind right. a chair and just shoot his gun. <laughs> he just frog splashes onto the fucking table. Dude, he, he gets way more damage to him than Valak does. Like, Valak takes two bullets and is like, <laughs> and fucking James Wood's like out. Like, that would fucking hurt so bad. You'd be like laid up for days. Like, you'd be like, fuck. Could you, could you imagine if you were in a situation? Like, if me and you. We're in a room and we have to kill this vampire. Jump into a and, wall. And, and I and I just jump in <laughs> I jump into the wall onto a table. You'd be like, We're fucked. We are done. <laughs> I just listen to you gro- the sounds of you groaning while I'm being disemboweled. <laughs> you being like, ow <laughs> I'm just being ripped to shreds. <laughs> like, oh it was a good try, I guess <laughs> I guess. <laughs> That yeah, it's so really funny. the equivalent of like uh, the Dumb and Dumber. Like, you're you're alive and you're a horrible shot because yeah. he's just diving and doing nothing. <laughs> oh my god. Um, yeah, yeah, and and again, why are we still shooting these things? You know, it's fucking weird. Oh, and then Daniel Baldwin saves the day and picks up James Woods, and and is like running and shooting. And it's the most awkward thing I've ever seen. They're both shooting and like hugging each other while they're shooting and trying to run. And it's like, dude, am I watching? This is the most insane shit. Everyone was on cocaine is my takeaway from this. Well, they escape. Um, and they, they save Katrina. Katrina. Laura Palmer. Laura Palmer. <laughs> um, they save her, even though they know she's fit. And you know this because uh, James Woods like lifts up her fucking skirt and is like, Jeez, or it might have been Daniel Baldwin, I forget, but he's like, yeah, you fucking bit. So this is the start of of everyone ignoring the fact that she's a vampire, but knowing full well that she's a vampire. And Daniel Baldwin being like, eat all this food, it makes you not turn into a vampire as fast. <laughs> I've never seen somebody not turn into a vampire for as long as Laura Palmer. It's absolutely the entire insane. movie. It's the entire movie. It's the entire movie. And then it's so funny because Daniel Baldwin towards the end is like Oh, Jesus, you're about to turn into a vampire. I fucking know it. Oh, God, don't do it. 
She's very clearly turning into a vampire. Sean, she's aware that she's turning into a vampire like 30 minutes in. Yes. She tries to kill herself, and Baldwin's like, don't you dare, and just slams her back through a window. <laughs> so him getting bit later and being surprised is the craziest shit in the world, because he's literally like, oh, God, I hope you don't turn into a vampire right now. I mean, I know you're going to any moment, but I hope it's not in this moment. <laughs> um, so they take her. Uh they also bury their guys, burn down the fucking... <laughs> uh, I loved this scene uh, of them cleaning up and just picking up gore and bloody weapons. And- yeah, it was sick. It, w- it was really fucking good. Uh, Actually, saying that, my one critique... Because I, I really like this movie. My one critique is whoever edited this, they, they, there's so many like weird montage scenes where they just yeah. fade in and out and like Dude, cut yes. wildly. I'm like, what am I watching? It happens at the end too. The the end cut was so weird that I was like, is this a flat? I, I honestly was like, is this all a dream? I was like, what <laughs> the fuck is happening? Um, But they take her, they bury their friends. Uh, we meet Alba, who's Crow's boss and a cardinal in the Catholic church. Yes. Uh, and he gives us the story behind Valak. Um, he's the first Disgrace vampire. Disgraced priest. Disgraced priest. First vamp. First vamp ever. And uh, uh, he needs Crow to put together a team and kill this motherfucker. Now, a second storyline starts to come underway here, which is the Black Cross. And I don't know where that comes from, but it just appears suddenly. So the Black Cross of Bezirs. I was ho- I love historical relic things that they put in movies. Is that a real Indiana thing? Jones. It's not, but oh. Bezirs is a real town in France, and it was the site of a massacre during the Cathar Crusades, where Pope Ooh. Innocent III initiated it to eliminate the growing Cathar movement, which was a Christian sect of Gnostics who did not agree with the Catholic Church's rules. If they agreed and they believed in God, but they also believed that there was an evil God, which is loose, which they thought was the devil in the Bible. Um, but Pope Innocent tried to send missionaries there to persuade them that they were wrong. Didn't work. So he ordered them all to be killed. They went to the town of Bezirs, uh, and there's a famous line called, or called, there's a famous line that says what the leader said, kill them all. God will know his own. Uh, also, that line may have never been uttered and was made up uh, years later. But regardless, they did kill everyone in that town, regardless of age, rank, or sex. So, the town of Bezirs was absolutely slaughtered in a, a crusade, and I would have to assume that is why they named this cross. Hey, I like it. <laughs> I like it. Cool background on that. Um, so they get a new priest and he kind of gives them that rule, the, the, the lowdown on Valak looking for this black cross. Um, and it's because Valak is performing an exorcism on himself. Because he is a victim of a reverse exorcism, which means that the body was destroyed, but the demon stayed. Yes. And that is Valak. I think that's cool as fuck. I think so too. I think it's a pretty unique take. I, I fucking love it. Um, and but by doing this exorcism, he will be able to enter the light, sunlight, and take over the fucking world however he pleases. Uh, this movie had a big budget, like other horror movies did. This movie could have really. I mean, this movie was a success, but this movie could have really been cemented. In I think so. Years. I think so. I think honestly, cool story. I, I I think John Carpenter. His, like, reluctance to use, like, a fucking action star kind of bit him in the ass. I think you throw, like, a decent action guy in this or somebody that's just, like, fucking cooler than James Woods. Like, I'm going to, like, just. Yeah, I'm going to disagree. I'm going to disagree. James uh, Woods are bust. No, baby. dude. James he Woods. looks like shit. He fucking... James Woods should be in every action movie. Oh, my God. <laughs> Well, they find a new He does cro- look like shit. There's no, there's no denying that. <laughs> they find a new crop of vamps, uh, and they kill them pretty handily. Um, and, like, dude, that's the other thing. I was reading, like, they're set up like, like the mob, the vampires. Because when you read the Wikipedia, it's like, everyone's a lieutenant. Like, we're fucking capos. I was like, what the fuck? 
There, and that's not talked about in the fucking movie. Like, I'm sorry. Like, that is some fucking person that's like deep in on John Carpenter vampires and is just like, oh, yeah, that's a lieutenant that he killed. What? How did you- <laughs> I wish there was Kappas. Dude, dude. James Woods just has the, the, crime, the crime family. Dude, just stream. Taped up. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, honestly, that's kind of what this is, right? Like, that's kind of what happens. Like, if you if you actually read it, like, he goes after the lieutenants first. Like, I that's not true. That's true. That's not fucking like really explicitly said in the movie, but like the the first house they hit is all the lieutenants, and then they like like he knows like there's like a tree, yeah, and he's part of a tree also. <laughs> this movie kind of does. Uh, so they're ready to kill Valak. They're ready to like. Go in, uh, and I know it sounds early for this, but it's not. It's not. It, it's it's not. Uh, they're ready to kill Valak. Katrina, uh, still a vampire. Uh, no, still isn't a vampire. Still a human. Still a human. Turning, uh, yeah. But she has a psychic link with and, Valak. And that's how they're she able to still. track him down. Yeah, they're able to track him down, see what he's Which, doing. I thought that was... <laughs> I honestly thought that was why they were keeping her around because they know she's bit that's so i thought they were keeping her around yes. to use her and then when she starts having these flashbacks the two bumbling idiots james woods and danny baldwin are like wait a second we can use her <laughs> what, yeah. what are you keeping her for and then they're like where do you see him and valix in the middle of a desert daniel baldwin's going tell us some landmarks there's only a cactus in the scene <laughs> <laughs> fucking idiot Wait, wait. <laughs> this has nothing to do with the movie. I honestly just want to ask you: Do you remember that like famous tree that was in the most isolated part of the desert? <laughs> and it, Josh, there's no roads. No, no, no. I think it was in Africa. Oh, it was. It was like a miraculous. Tree oh tree yes, I know. Somebody, you're... somebody hit it, drunk driving, <laughs> and killed it. Dude, that is the most <laughs> unbelievable story in real life ever. Why was somebody on? There's no roads there. Dude, do you remember? I don't know if you remember this. In Connecticut, that happened, too. There was, like, a... It was called the Gateway Tree, and it was, like... Oh, dude, it was, like, two trees that, like, grew together and created, like, a hole. So, it was, like, two trees that were combined and made a hole in between them. It was really cool. And I think they called it, like, a Gateway Tree or something. And it was, like, part of the town's legacy. And some dude went over and just cut it down because he was so annoyed at it. <laughs> that, that is nuts. I just I just googled tree hit by drunk di- driver in desert and it was the Earth's not not the country's the Earth's most isolated tree the only one around for 250 miles uh, and it was knocked down by a drunk driver <laughs> in the Sahara the, the Nigerian Sahara. Can you imagine how drunk you'd have to be? Well, how is he out there? There's no trees around for 250 miles. How far is he driving? That means there's definitely no houses. <laughs> is insane anyway lhc um so they have they come up with this plan to use the priest as bait um i don't know why but they're going to lure out the vampires the lieutenants by using the priest as bait uh that is until uh james wood is like hey you play sports you ever play sports and he's like yeah soccer by the way if you want somebody that runs fast Soccer is probably the sport you want. That's all you do for 90 minutes. Imagine if you said baseball player, I'd be like, all right, I'm fucking, I'm going to fucking <laughs> do this. You fucking stand around, and put fucking lips in your mouth. Like, get the fuck out of here. Uh, a soccer player I'm fucking thrilled with. James Woods is like, oh, for fuck's sake, I guess I'll do it myself. <laughs> you're like, okay, fucking relax. <laughs> So it's all as man <laughs> and, and dude, in a moment like this and it, dude, he's like about to possibly kill like the most powerful vampire on earth. And he's like, Oh, for fuck's sake, you played, you played soccer. Like it, I was fine until I heard you say soccer. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, he goes, they catch the girl though. And that's when James Wood does that insane screaming. You miserable fucking bitch. <laughs> Die. You stupid ass bitch. Just scream. You're like, Oh, all right, cool. Uh, and then an entire army of fucking vampires shows up, jumping James Woods, uh, capturing James Woods. Yeah, don't kill him. 
Padre, uh, probably the same stump performer as the guy that crashed into the wall, decides to just jump into nothing. Like, dude, it's the craziest jump I've ever seen. He jumps so... Padre has fucking super ups. He jumps like 40 feet over this fucking like wall and just, you would assume he's dead. Like you don't know what's behind that fucking wall. Um, and Daniel Baldwin and his, his, his vampire lover are, are gone. They, like, yes. they're like peace. <laughs> um, anyway, in that moment, uh, Cause we said, we said, uh, um, it pretty much in passing, but Daniel Baldwin's been bit. Bob. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, so wait, Daniel Baldwin wait, got vampi- bit a the, while. the vampire is gonna like, she's trying to, not the vampire Katrina. She's trying to kill herself because she knows she's gonna turn into a vampire. Right. He body slams her back. She's on the ledge of a building to like jump off. He body slams her back in through a window, and uh, she immediately bites him. And that's when he's just like, "What? What are you fucking nuts?" <laughs> it's like the most nu- dude. It's it's like a 1950s dad getting bit by a dog. Like, it's like yeah, you fucking idiot. Hey. <laughs> What are you fucking stupid? And it's like, dude, you you're you're a vampire now. <laughs> I'd be way more. But yeah, so, I'd so start he's bit, crying. <laughs> he's bit and he does not tell anyone. He you know he, keep, he keeps it. So I thought, I thought this would be like the typical you know zombie yeah trope where you get bit and then you slowly turn and you, you know the, James Woods would would have to be faced with killing his friend yeah. right, his partner. That's that's that, that not what happens. It, Danny Baldwin is equally as sweaty as he was oh, at yeah. the beginning of the movie as he is now while he's turning into a vampire. And he makes it to the very end. <laughs> what? what? By the way, everyone else turns like immediately. Like <laughs> fucking insane. Um would you would you become a vampire if you if you could choose? Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah. Is it, these people with this fucking it's weird not like a, morality. It's not like a thing. zombie. Like a zombie, you know, you're brain dead and you just walk around and Dude, just party all. forever, Vamp- dude. Vampire in every vampire movie, you're just a lover, and you stay up all night. You and just you- fuck and you fucking drink, dude. <laughs> what what is the problem, dude? Trying dude. to fight that, dude. <laughs> <laughs> fucking narcs, dude. Valg's been alive for seven hundred years. He looks great. He looks fucking. He looks fucking great, dude. We know he has the white face. But yeah, but you know what? The white face. I feel like even even. I feel like storyline. I feel like you wipe it off. Like I feel like he's like wearing makeup as as a guy. Like as a vampire, he, it's just choice. He's a choice. It's a choice. I think it's a look. I think he's like, hey, dude. He has a good build. I'm th- I'm fucking thirty seven. I don't even have, I have yeah. a hard time keeping my build down. He's seven hundred. Looks great. <laughs> looks phenomenal. I would never fight that. Well, Katrina turns and uh, finishes Daniel Baldwin off. Um, yeah. Well, well, for now. Yeah. Don't he shows up again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Never mind. I was reading a note. I was like, "What the fuck am I writing?" Anyway, um, Jack Crow though gets got. Uh, he is now captive by Valak. Uh, we also learned that the Cardinal, uh, who we thought was a good guy, is a bad guy, and he is uh, Valak's boy, and he wants to be a vampire, and like quite literally uh, admits what that we he's just, just afraid of dying. <laughs> what we were just talking about. He's just like, I just want to live forever. Yeah, he's like, I had no real big thing here, just <laughs> don't want to die. <laughs> uh, he has no grand vision, no master plan. Um, and he will help. He, the reason Valak needs a priest is because wait, no, the reason Valak needs him is because he needs a priest for this for performance. the ritual, yeah, dude. This is the most elaborate fucking ritual I have ever heard of in my life. Well, so he, much shit has, has to happen. He has to recreate the original ritual oh of how when he got turned. Yeah, it's fucking madness. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so he's he's a baddie. He's a vet. He's a baddie. The ritual, I, I wrote this down, the ritual requires the participation of a priest and the blood and the crucifixion of a crusader. Who is James is Woods. Yeah. And uh, so they, they they crucify James Woods. He is on a cross He's in a this cross. movie. Um, and then the priest shows up, kills our, our, the good priest, Padre shows up, kills the bad cardinal. Uh, and then Valak's like, you're going to fucking do the ritual then. And he's like. No, I'm fucking not. <laughs> no, I'm not. He puts a gun to his head. Great. Great thing. Yes. But then Valak's like, okay, cool. I'm going to light this guy on fire. <laughs> <laughs> he 
James was just screaming, my nuts are on fire. <laughs> Dude, the, the, the fire wasn't even near him. And he's like, hey, but hey. And again, like he's not, he's, I wish he was screaming like that if he was actually concerned. But he's like, hey, Padre, my nuts are on fire here. <laughs> well, what are we doing? Uh, there's no fire there. Uh, and then the funniest scene maybe ever happens, which is Daniel Baldwin. yippee guy <laughs> Coming on, coming in his Jeep, lets go of the wheel, pulls out a bow and arrow, shoots the top of the uh, cross that that that, yep. that uh, James Woods is attached James Woods to, is on. Yep. and then violently rips the cross out of the crib. Again, that stunt act, because that's a man, that's not a dummy. There's a man tied to that cross and it hits the ground and Bro. they got concussed. Dude. And lucky he didn't fucking land flat on his face and drag. If he went face forward, would have been killed. Yeah, <laughs> just dragged. Oh, dude, to fuck it, dragged on pavement behind a jeep with a giant cross on your back. <laughs> fucking insane, dude. It is like one of the most violent stunts I've ever seen. That guy's body just fucking. It's just like, blah, 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 and then it just gets yanked again. <laughs> it's fucking incredible. Uh and I also, for the movie's it. sake, keep in mind, we just watched Daniel Baldwin die. And D- Daniel Baldwin is fine from here on out. Like, I know he's turning, like, he's going to be a vampire, but he is fine. Mm. Completely fine. Um. Anyway, Valak is trapped outside with the sun, which is, like, a longer scene than it should be, because he's like, huh, huh, huh. It feels like maybe 30 seconds, probably, which is a little... But it's it's weird because there's a door right next to him the entire time, and it's also the door he enters to be Correct. to be safe. But for some Correct. reason, he stands outside of it for like a minute, being like, well, "What do I do?" <laughs> and also, the roof of that building is the most exposed roof, which which James Woods realizes at the end because then he's like, "That's my that's the ticket." But the sunlight would be entering that at oh, every angle, <laughs> every angle, and also James Woods uses his body. Fast and the Furious style to just take out to take out a Dude, beam of a beam. house. <laughs> he tackles it. <laughs> Dude, again, 50-year-old James Woods. He can't weigh. He does not weigh 200 pounds. He does not weigh 200 pounds in that fucking movie. There's no fucking way. There's no fucking way. I weigh 200 pounds. How tall is James Woods? James Woods height. Uh 5'11", so he's an inch taller than me. Dude, he's he's like 180, 190 pounds. Max. Takes out the fucking beam of a house. Just fucking hits it. Fucking Jesus Christ. I could do Bimmy math. He weighs uh, 400 pounds. <laughs> Bimmy look, math is the most, most accurate. Looked at his fucking Facebook pics. He's got to be 350 fucking pounds. Uh... Anyway, uh, so James Woods gets the upper hand on the vampire, and the first thing he says to him, his first wise crack, because he's finally got Valak where he wants him, is inexplicably, is, after 600 years, how's your dick working? Pretty good? (laughs) Honestly, though, that might be the best fighting technique to just say something like that. You'd be so flabbergasted. You're like, you have a fucking spear through you, and you're like, wait, what the fuck did you just say? (laughs) I'm telling you, James Woods are is my dad. Like, are you it, talking about my dick right now? They're, they're the same age group. That That is what he would be like. Hey, your fucking dick doesn't work. Valk's like, wait, what the fuck? Dude, I'm like so close to killing you. I can still easily kill you right now. Um, but he doesn't. He doesn't. Uh, and then that's when Crow hits him with wood. Because he's never fought a vampire before. <laughs> But he collapses the roof by throwing himself through a beam. Dude, think about his fucking fighting. Well, he, well, he 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 impales him with it with the uh, the black cross of yeah uh, Belzir's. But that doesn't do does anything. Nothing <laughs> does nothing because again, it's not a wooden stake, and he doesn't put it through his heart. He just puts it through his stomach. And Valak's just like uh, you fucking idiot. Like <laughs> this did nothing. He's just pulling, and Valak's like pulling it through himself. Dude. That's when James Woods is like. Better tackle this support beam that's holding up the entire building. I don't know how to kill these things. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so lost. <laughs> um, it's fucking insane. Uh, the worst at his job. Um, but he collapses the beam and uh, the light comes in and Valak is dead. 
No more Valak. Valak's done so. Um, so the priest, uh, Padre and Crow realize they do have to kill our boys Montoya and Katrina, uh, Daniel Baldwin and his bride. And dude, this scene honestly was like one of the craziest things. I, I, it felt like insane. Like, cause James Woods is like, you really love her, don't you? And he's like, <laughs> he's like, we're the perfect couple, Jack. It is dead, a dead serious scene. We are the perfect couple, Jack. This guy has berated this woman. The there is no point in this entire movie that Katrina seems even remotely interested in no. Daniel Baldwin, right? Right? No. They, like, they're no. not a couple. No. Not a couple. No, not at all. It's insane. It's fucking madness. And and then she's just she's in the back of his car. Dude, dude he's while like, this is happening. What while this dude, like right before this happens, Daniel Baldwin's is like loading up her body into the fucking van. <laughs> Yeah, she she wants to come with me. <laughs> and and Padre, who is brand new to the vampire slaying yes. world, right? Like yes. he's just slayed his first vampire fifteen minutes ago. Is like we need to shoot this guy in the fucking face. Like yeah. he's going to turn into which you know again does still. Like, <laughs> but 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 James Woods is his mentor. So what do you expect? <laughs> but that is that is what he says. He has a gun on him, and James Woods like you fucking better put that down or i'll kill you right here Dude. and and then and then james woods is like <laughs> he tells padre he'll kill him if if padre does anything to yes you know, Baldwin. and then james woods is like by the way rule number one if your partner turns into a vampire you fucking kill him We're like yeah that's, that's what the priest is saying dude even daniel baldwin goes like listen i'm not even a slayer anymore so like he's like saying like kill me because i'm not a slayer and the, but he's like, but I but, helped you even after but, I got, he's like, I got bit two days ago. Well, no, Baldwin's that's like, that's the craziest thing. Like Baldwin, like the, the fucking, uh, what's his name? Woods is the one that is like, how long ago did she bite you? Like they're having like this casual conversation. It, it sounds like when you listen to people talk about like when they got exposed to COVID, it's like, how many days from the test? It's like, what? <laughs> they're like, hey, hey, Alex, like, hey, how many days ago was it? He's like two. I was like, well, okay, so, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> I give you two, you give me two, so I think we give them two days. And the priest was like, yeah, two days sounds good. <laughs> the, pri- the priest agrees immediately. This is the least, James Woods is the least efficient vampire killer of all time. Because because then he's like, first off, fucking kill you. Liam, Liam Neeson lifted this line directly when he did Taken, because he's like, I'll give you two days. Right. Wherever you are, I will hunt you down. I will find you, and I will kill you. Yes. And Baldwin's just like, <laughs> Baldwin's just like, mm, okay, that seems fair. <laughs> gets his car and drives away. <laughs> and Baldwin's big thing about this two days is like he's like, he's like, I need a vacation. He's like, I'm so yeah, tired, dude. That's all it is. He's just like, he's like, just like I'm let so me and her, working. just let me and her go down to like the southern border, which they're already at the southern. Dude, I've never seen anything more southern in my life. <laughs> Dude, that's so fucking funny. Yeah, he, he's he's like, I'm so tired. He's like, I just I just need a couple days off. <laughs> uh, yeah, and Crow, they all agree to that for whatever reason. Yeah, they do. So they give him a two day start. Um, that's when he says "Via con Dios, my friend," which is insane. Uh, and then. And then, and then James Woods goes, time to slay some vampires, Padre. So this is our new power team. Um, James Woods in this thing, which I, I'll tell you what, I would watch a movie again with those two in it, playing these characters. Vampires, Los Muertos. Okay, fine. I guess you're right. <laughs> um, you finally won me over. If you listen to the Patreon bonus up until now... Joe's probably said that like a hundred times. Like, <laughs> so when are we watching this movie? And he finally beat me down in the final minutes of this episode. Um, but th- that's that's a fine ending for an action movie. But what happens after is they just start talking about fucking boners for no reason. And that's what we fade out to. A priest and James Woods being like, how fucking rock hard are oh, you? How hard do you- <laughs> James was asking him how hard he got when he killed this vampire. And he's like, mahogany. 
James Woods ist so, oh, oh, oh. oh, Teak, Teak. Uh, yeah, yeah, I got a little chubby. I was like, what is, this is fucking insane. And again, why did you let him ad lib? That's fucking ridiculous. It's the most ridiculous ending to a movie. Two guys walking away to kill vampires being like, how's, how's your boner after killing a vampire? Oh, and by the way, that's what it's about. Cause he's a priest. And he's like, so that's the first person you ever killed, huh? That's all it's about. And the priest is like, yeah. And he's like, you fucking got a boner. <laughs> and that is Vampires. John Carpenter. Thanks for giving that to us, 1998. J. Carp. Would you recommend it? No, I 100% recommend it. Absolutely. Uh, you got to watch Fun. it. It's on Netflix, it's too. It is on that. It's also on YouTube. Nice. Um, so next week, guys, we are going to take a week off. Uh, we both have coinciding scheduling conflicts, which works out great for you guys. So it's not two weeks off. It's just one week off. Um, we'll probably throw something up to kind of tide y'all over and listen to and enjoy. Um, and then when we come back, we're going to alter our schedule just a little bit here. Uh, we are going to do sleepaway camp, uh, August 16th. We're gonna do sleepaway camp. Two. No, I'm sorry. I'm an idiot. No. We're going to do Sleepaway Camp 1, and then we're going to do Sleepaway Camp 2. Um, those are the last two weeks of August. Uh, and then Saturday the 27th is our live show. We were going to do Savage Beach, uh, an action film, but we are going to do Evil Dead and Evil Dead 2. Or should we do that this month? Should we do the European yeah, one in August? Yeah, let's fuck. do it. European one because oh, because next month the live show will be in Chicago, so let's do it. Oh yeah, fuck. Okay, Europe. Um, yeah, let's do two live shows, baby. Um, so that's it. August twenty seventh, we'll do the Europe show and the. Uh, I don't know if I'm around August twenty seventh. I know. I was just like thinking about that schedule. Well, let's let's hold off on the live show uh, announcement, but we're going to do an Evil Dead, Evil Dead two. It will do a European, European show. Yes, that's our plan for Europe. So if we have to wait till October for that, I mean, that's a pretty fucking solid October lineup. Yeah, for sure. So um, we'll figure it out, though. We'll figure it out. Um, anything else? No. I don't uh, think we got it. Thanks for uh, supporting the live show last week as we started the episode with. It was great. All because of the listeners. Yes. So uh, it was fucking keep awesome. It and keep it Chicago, coming. September. 17th 16th 16th uh 16th right brood 17th. brood coffee shop in chicago will be there uh movie to be determined uh we should probably get that lined up though um richard speck prison tapes that's the plan <laughs> as of right now with paul's face superimposed on all of the body i listen i want that merch drop richard paul. specks titties paul's face let's go chicago 2022 <laughs> I fucking love it. Uh I think that is a good idea. Uh I mean it's not. It's a fucking terrible idea, but I'm going to make it happen. It, if you want me to do something for you, make it like the most outlandish thing because that's when I like if it's normal, I'll be like, "Yeah, whatever." But if you give me something like that, I'm going to fucking <laughs> I'm going to make it. <laughs> <laughs> Cuz that's fucking madness. And do Hey, Paul, we just came back from Chicago. Uh, congratulations on the baby. Here is a shirt with your face on Richard Speck's body. <laughs> <laughs> and here's one in your wife's size. <laughs> and a baby onesie for your child. Uh, <laughs> um, anyway, that's it, guys. Thank you all so much. Um, appreciate you all. If you want to support us, patreon.com slash I hate horror, red, I hate horror.com, Instagram.com slash I hate horror and facebook.com slash I hate horror. Uh, and that's, that's, that's it. Um, Joe, where can they find you? Instagram, boognish1985. Thank you guys so much. Thank you to Joe. And for Joe, this is Sean. Stay weird. Thank you. Adios. I die here if I die sick. Who is all fucking dead? I wanna play. I'm gonna watch what I'm not supposed to watch. This is a fucking zombie getting sliced and diced. The monster. Mutilated, 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 mutil